So in the last video, we were left with this network where we've got some A1, S11, uh, S21. We've got this block that we uh, we developed for ourselves, which is uh, 1 over 1 minus gamma L S22. We've got another block gamma L and we've got another block S12 and then over here we've got a summing junction and B1 and now it's uh, it's pretty easy to simplify this whole thing so we know from a simple linear systems analysis that if we've got two blocks cascaded with each other, all we need to do is multiply them and we, got the, we get the overall result. So we multiply these two and we multiply this one and we multiply this one. So we're just multiplying four things together simultaneously. Uh, and we've still got our input signal A1. And now this block is S21 times gamma L times S12 divided by 1 minus gamma L S22. And then we've got another path S11 and then a summing junction down here, both positive. and our output B1. And we know if we've got two uh, signals in parallel and they're summed, all we need to do is add them. So we can say that B1 is equal to A1 times S11 plus A1 times S21, S12, gamma L over one minus gamma L S22. And if we're interested in the gain B1 over A1, we can just rewrite this. It's equal to S11 plus S21, S12, gamma L over one minus gamma L, S22. And that is our gamma in. So that is the overall network's reflection coefficient. Uh, if we take everything into account, including the load and all the infinite reflections and everything. So if you had tried to calculate that with S parameters and matrix multiplication, uh, if you had a computer in front of you, it might have been nice and easy. But if you had to do it by hand, it would have been absolutely miserable. And this is a pretty straightforward way to calculate a specific quantity of interest from just uh, just signal flow graph or uh, block diagram manipulation. And the only crazy thing we had to do was drag uh, a single component's wire across another component's wire and then apply feedback and we're good to go. Uh, so this is a really straightforward way of analyzing networks and it lets us calculate uh, calculate things quite easily. Now, just a final note on the difference between signal flow graphs and block diagrams. Um, mathematically speaking, there isn't one. Uh, graphically speaking, what we use as wires uh, in signal flow graphs, uh, so basically wires become uh, circles and blocks become wires, which is kind of annoying and it makes it a little more difficult to deal with. So if this was A and this is B in a signal flow graph, it would look like this in a block diagram where A would be the wire and this is some constant S. S would be the block and B would be another wire. Um, and when we've got intersection or when we've got uh, multiple wires converging on the same place, so let's say C, um, then that is an implicit uh, summing junction. So we've got some C coming in, and then that produces our output 
v. And here that would actually cause our output to be b, not this intermediate value. So the intermediate value is something else. Um, so the difference between signal flow graphs and block diagrams is literally just one of notation. Uh, I find signal flow graphs are uh, more elegant, but also a little more difficult to grasp. But just know that they are completely equivalent. You can use one in place of another, and there's a direct translation between the two. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So you can use either one.